Hello and welcome back to Stephen with Steve. Today we're going to go through introduction of algebra and how to do substitution into equations. So let's jump on in. So to start, let's have a look. So here's a little bit of a leading question. Imagine you owned a bike shop and say you owned the store that sold all these bikes and chains and helmets. A new tool company has approached you to, and they're wanting 20 bikes, 5 chains and 30 helmets. If the bikes cost $5,500 each, chains cost $70 and then the helmets cost $40, can you create an algebraic expression and then try and solve it? So just pause the video and see what you can do. Cool, so what you should have found something like this. So I did it in terms of the cost. So the cost is equal to 5,500B plus 70C plus 40H. And then you substitute in the values that you know. So you know that it's 20, you want 20 bikes, five, helmet, uh, five chains, and then 30 helmets. And then lastly, you solve it, and then you got the 111,550. That's a pretty good example of substituting in. So we've made in our own equation. So this is the store's equation for when they're selling an equipment. And then this is what the customers wanted. So this was the unknown, the tour guide was coming in, and you didn't know exactly what they wanted. And that's how you could solve it. So the objectives for today is we want to understand variables in algebra. We want to learn to substitute in um, expressions and then apply this algebra to some real world scenarios. So some like expressions, uh, like terms. Basically, here's a real simple question. What's three cats plus two cats? And hopefully you've worked out that's the same as five cats. Now I've done this with a funny little picture, but you could do it with anything. So usually we use variables and probably we would use a C. So that's the same as five cats instead of saying um, three cats plus two cats because that's inefficient. And the whole idea with like terms is you want to bind things together. So another example, if we did that um, properly, well not properly, but a little bit differently with um, the variables. So we could go three C plus two C and we would group them together and we would get five C. Cool. So when we introduce variables and we want to substitute in, we want to substitute the values inside of the um, where the variables sat. And the trick with that is I always write brackets around where the variables were, and then we just inject into it the values that we know it to be. So simple example, if x equals to 7 and the equation was y is equal to 5x, we would just substitute it in, y would equal 5 times 7, and we would get 35. Now this is a really interesting direct proportion. So for every one it goes across, it goes up five. So seven, yep, we go across seven, we go up 35, which would be significantly higher than one. And we can look at that relationship quite easily with those variables. So here's another example. If X is equal to five and Y was equal to um, two X plus three, we'd substitute in the five wherever we saw the X. So for this, I would write brackets and then inject the five into where the X was. So then now we've just got a simple equation. So we do two times five plus the three. So two times five is 10 plus the three gives you 13. So just pause the video and see if you can do this one by yourself. Awesome, so what you should find is X is equal to seven and then we substitute in the Y value. We would do Y is equal to three X plus uh, minus four. So then we've got y is equal to three lots of seven minus four, which then gives you 17. Cool, so pause the video, have a go, see if you can crack all these ones out. Awesome, so for the first one, we do five plus three, which would then give you eight. The next one would be five times two, which would give you 10. Next one would be 14 take away five, which gives you nine. Next one would be two times five, which is 10 plus four, which gives you 14. The next one would be three times five plus two minus five. So you would get 15 plus two minus five, which would then equal 12. Next one would be 13 minus 10, which give you three. Then the next one would be five plus five times uh, 10 divided by five. So 10 um, times two, which would give you 20. Next one would be 12 divided by four, which would give you three. And the last one we had would be 10 take away five and then divide all of that by five. Cool. So you can substitute in multiple var variables as well. So in this case here, we've got a is equal to 10, b is equal to 2. What's the value of y when it is substituted in y is equal to a minus b? So we've got 10 minus 2. So that would be the same as uh, 10 take away 2, which is equal to 8. The next one here, we've got m is equal to 8, n is equal to 3. What's the value of y when substituted in y is equal to 2m minus n? 
So we've got two lots of eight minus three, which would give us 13. So just pause the video, have a go at this challenge here. Awesome, so first one we would do two times two plus four, we would get eight. The next one we would have three times two minus two, so we get six take away two, which equals four. The next one here we've got two plus three, um, which is just five. The next one here we've got two times three minus four plus three, so we've got six minus four plus three, which equals five. The next one here, we've got two lots of everything bound together in brackets. So it's three times two plus two times three. So that gives you six plus six and then double that. So it's, you get 24. The next one here, the brackets are really important. Remember bod mass, we need to follow that first. So we've got a hundred lots of um, minus, but it's inside the brackets. So inside the brackets, we've got 10 times two plus 10 times three, which would give you 20 plus 30. So hundred minus 50, which then leaves you a 50. This one, we've got the same expression with different inputs. So this time we're gonna do five lots of three plus two lots of six, which gives you 27. The next one, we've got five lots of four plus two lots of one, which then gives you 22. And the last one, we've got five lots of sevens plus two lots of threes, which gives you 41. Down the bottom here, we just add on one, add on three, sorry, to the number. So four plus three is seven, five plus three is eight, six plus three is nine, 10 plus three is 13, and 100 plus three is 103. Cool. So then last bit here is a quick little problem solving question. So the length of a rectangle is four times the width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 45 meters. What is the area of the rectangle? So there's a little picture. So we've got four W's um, times a W. So the perimeter is the same as two lots of the L plus W. So it's the same as two lots of four W plus W. If we swap the L with a four W. Then we group that together, we get five W's. And then this is the really cool part bit. We now have a relationship between the perimeter and just the width, not the length. So the perimeter is whatever the width is times 10, which is kind of neat. So now we know the perimeter was 45, so we substitute that in. So 45 is equal to 10 W's. And now to get the W by itself, we divide that both sides by 10 and we get um, the width is equal to 4.5. The last bit, we've then got the length is equal to four W's. So we do four lots of 4.5, which gives us 18. And then the last bit here, because the question was asking what was the area of the rectangle, we need to times those two together. So 18 times 4.5, and then we get 81 meters squared. So notice that I put the units in all the way through this. That's really, really important. Cool, so there's a whole heap of Dr. Frost questions there that you can have a crack at. Um, really important that you have a go at these because they do help with the, the stuff we're about to do the next step. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed. That was a pretty straightforward lesson with subtweeting the values. Really important takeaway is wherever you see an X or a Y, you wrap brackets around where it was and then you inject the number into that. And then just use the same rule that we've done before. So if it's a positive and positive, it's a positive, it's a positive and negative, it's a negative, and if they're different, it becomes a negative. That's it for me. See you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.